former president of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasan, just said, agriculture is capable of eradicating poverty if taken seriously. Hello and welcome to this week episode of Agro on TV. My name is Faith Esemwewe. As usual, we are here to avail you of all you need to know about the agricultural business world. Be a part of the show by sending your comments and contributions to all the social media platforms showing on your screen. I'll be right back after this timeout. Stay with us. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. Agricultural empowerment in the country is gaining ground as new farmers graduate from Agricultural Institute in Lagos. Agro on TV was there to report the event. Take a look at this and other stories on the pulse. Rosta Agricultural Practical Training Institute has graduated its first set of farmers in the livestock production field. While giving his welcome address in the graduation ceremony, Taiwo Adiwe, principal partner of the institute, commended the commitment of the farmers during the training. Today, we celebrate the new farmers in poultry production. They have been here for training that uh, took them up nine weeks. Apart from the classroom uh, lessons, they were on the farm for practical sections. And uh, today we issue them certificate of attendance. And uh, we have seen them through all the major things they need to know in poultry production. And we believe that they make success of it. But the basic knowledge they need to have to have the success of this poultry business yeah, we have taught them from locations, choice of location, from erecting the houses, and the three principal uh, key points in poultry, which is genetics, and the DO chip, the nutrition, because feed contributes not less than 75% of cost of the production, and then the environment, which is the E. Speaking to Agro on TV, some of the graduating students spoke on their motive for embarking on the training while emphasizing their readiness to execute everything they have been exposed to in the training. I expect them to quickly get back to work, to start their poultry business that might be or livestock, or livestock business. They should please remain focused because agriculture is very important, it's the mainstay of our economy, it's actually the only positive solution to the problem we have in this country now. So I, I want them to be very focused, to be steadfast, and they should not give up on this decision they have taken to go into agriculture. The training, I want to get it right. I've done some businesses that, some business because of interest, but that was not my original calling. And I lost money. I've depended on some associates for their technical skill, and I've been played out. So this one, I want to get the practical training myself. I want to know what it is to run a proper poultry farm. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava in the world, but still must be maximizing the full potentials at its disposal. On Talk Time, Chairman of Ondo State Cassava Growers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Fela Alorumodimu, profiles the ways to make this happen. Today on Talk Time, I have with me in the house the Chairman of the Ondo State Chapter of Nigeria Cassava Growers Association. Mr. Fela Olorumodimu, good to have you on the show today, sir. Thank you so much, Presenter. Sir, could you please tell us the activities of your association in Ondo State? Thank you. You see, uh, Nigeria Gasava Grass Station is an NGO, a non governmental organization. And uh, we are here in Ondo State. You know, we are everywhere all over Nigeria. We have a national president, we have the national bodies. And by the grace of God, I'm the state chairman in Ondo. We gather farmers, you know, we identify farmers, you know, from, you know, we have uh, some farmers that are, um, how do we put them, you know, the, the, the farmers in the interiors. And we also have youths in agriculture, that's youth farmers. We have women that are farmers. We have, uh, you know, uh, big farmers as, you know, people that are into mechanized farming, and we have peasant farmers. So all of these farmers, we identify them, then we register them. You know, sometimes we go on here, we go on the newspapers, 
to ensure that you know, we spell out our activities. So several of them come to us, we register them, then we group them. You know, federal government through the Ministry of Federal Ministry of Agriculture, they will be enlightened through them to group our farmers into cooperatives. So we have them in cooperatives of tens, of twenties. Then uh, we look at how we, you know, train them, most especially in the modern day farming, because we believe in agribusiness. You know, we keep telling our farmer that it's not like it used to be. Where farmers, you know, we go to the farm, they cultivate their farm. Of course, they don't have any record. They don't even know how much they spend on it. And why, when they are uprooting it, they are uprooting their cassava tubers, they send them to the market. They can sell them at any price because they don't even have any record. So they are not looking at it as in making profits. So we introduce to them agricultural business. We train them. You know, you know, through the help of uh, the ADPs and uh, some of our extension officers. So we train them. We also render to them extension services. Nigeria is said to be among the top um, uh, producers of, of cassava in the world. But we're not com competitive in the international market. What is your reaction to that, sir? Thank you. You see, Nigeria is not just among the top producers. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava as at now. You know, we have others like Thailand, we have like, um, you know, uh, Uganda, Cameroon, Ghana, but Nigeria remains the largest producer of cassava. Yes, you are very correct in the sense that we are not really, you know, uh, in the competitive markets. We are far, far behind. Uh, we have a lot of challenges that are associated to this. One of the major challenges is that, you know, we don't really have a contiguous farmland whereby our farmers can really, you know, go into mechanized farming. You know, in the advanced world, they are, they are, they are, they've, they've even gone beyond mechanization. They are now in the precise farming. What you, are, you know what you are putting in and you know exactly what you are expecting, irrespective of the climate change. But in Nigeria, we are still far, far behind because we are still struggling with mechanization. Because when you even talk about the mechanization, we, with the use of tractors, we can prepare our land, we can plow it, we can arrow it, we can ridge it. But when you talk about planting, we still go on manual planting. We still go on, you know, so, or sometimes manual weeding. Sometimes, you know, many times we uproot manually. These are the things that are really putting us behind among our, you know, other uh, countries that grows uh, cassava. You know, Nigeria have over 80 million, you know, about 84 million arable land. And out of this 84, arable land, 84 million arable land, it is about 30 million that is put into use, not just for cassava, for all the agricultural, you know, uh, activities in Nigeria. Okay, um, there is a new government uh, administration in Ondo State. And of course, I believe your association has expectations what you would like you know, the government to do for you know, um, the state, basically, in respect to agriculture. So, in light of this, what are your expectations from the new administration in respect to agriculture? Yeah, our expectation, mm -hmm. just like as I was uh, saying the other time, our expectation is for our cassava, to, our cassava to be able to compete with other cassavas in other countries of the world at international market. And like I was saying the other time, for us to really meet up, you know, there is a need, you know, for us to go fully into this mechanization. Because when we go into mechanization, the price of cassava will definitely drop. And when it drops, we'll be able to meet up with the international uh, level. Then, for us to be able to do this, you know, in those states, we're expecting the new administration. You know, a proposal has been also put up to the new uh, government in you know, those states to clear more land for us. Land clearing is a major challenge because we want to, the youths want to get involved. We have to make this business attractive to them. We have plans, you know, to give them 10 hectares. Then uh, the following year, we had another five hectares until an individual farmer has about 20 to 25 hectares because this is when the farmers can really prosper through, uh, you know, farming. We also expect the government to uh, assist us in the area of tractors. 
we do not really have tractors in on those things. Majorly, when we want to go into this mass production of uh, cassava, we go to your state, we go to Osho state, because their government has really done much for them by you know, getting them tractors. So if the state government can get our tractors, the farmers can take it, then we can, now even as an association, we can begin to you know, pay it gradually for the space of like uh, three, four, five years, then we'll be able to you know, pay off. So we really need that, then we need them to assist us in the areas of inputs. You know, the current trend in Nigeria now, how everything has jumped up. It has affected chemicals. You know, the price of some chemicals now, you know, is uh, herbicides and insecticides that we use in the farm has really gone up, has really, you know, jack up. We need government intervention on in those things. So sell to us at a subsidized rate. You know, we farmers need to be encouraged. Okay. I, I want to understand, um, these farmers in your association, are there some challenges that pose a threat to them? We would like to know. Most of the challenges that are facing them is that their lands are not tractorial. So some of them still go back to the old way of uh, land clearing and all that, you know, in a manual way. It really slows them down. Then another thing is that, you know, weeds, weed control. But like I told you that the price of chemical has gone up. Weed control is also, you know, though we are doing our best through federal government intervention, the other time we had HQC Elver program, high quality cassava flour with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, and it was a huge success. Whereby we cultivated uh, 29,500 hectares all across Nigeria, and on those states participated, you know, very well in the sense that we cultivated um, over 4,000 hectares, uh, about uh, 1,600 farmers you know, participated in it, whereby we distributed to them fertilizer, chemicals, you know, we were able to assist them uh, through that. Then another challenge they are facing, you know, is across Nigeria, is this Esmen uh, uh, menace. You know, it's, it's a terrible thing. I have a farmer send me, a, 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 you know, he sent me a message through WhatsApp, lamenting how his farm, he spent three million naira on this farm, and the old farm was ravaged you know, by the uh, Fulani S-men. And the, the, the funnest, you know, the, the news is over, the, the country is, is, is in everywhere in Nigeria. And you cannot even query or question them. They begin to attack you. There were some people that were killed, you know, in those states. You know, we wrote all these things, sent them to the State House of, uh, State House of Assembly. Then we also sent it to the, um, you know, to the National House, the Senate, and the um, House of Rep you know, seeking for the government uh, intervention. So it's still a serious problem, serious challenge, you know, in those days. Okay, so do, do you support the creation of grazing reserves for the herdsmen? Well, you know, it's in two foods. Uh, from my own point of view, I believe that, you know, the grazing reserves can be done for the uh, cattle rearers in their locations, that means that is in the north. Because if we should go by that, does it mean that the farmer that have poultry farm or the apigree farm will also have to be allocating them lands, you know, for them to be able to grow the feeds that they need or to process the feed that they need for their uh, animals? You understand what I'm saying? So because this thing is generating a lot of crisis already. The, 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 the grazing reserve that we may say we want to give them in you know, those states, maybe it belongs to some farmers. This is where they are fed. This is where you know, they plant, they grow their own uh, uh, cassava or some other crops. So by the time we now release it for cattle rearers, then what is going to be their fate? Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, it all depends on the government. But I believe if we really want to do something for them. Where they're coming from is very large enough for them to have their grazing reserve. Like in America and in other advanced countries, they don't move cattle from one place to another. They put them in a place. You understand? It's not even mandatory for them to send off live cows. They can prepare them and package them and send them to us like we do to chicken everywhere. 
you talked about um, there's government interventions and of course how you um, you also help. So in the light of this, um, aside the government interventions be in um, the aspect of giving loans, what is your association doing to help these farmers? We train a lot of uh, extension um, officers and whenever the farmers are having challenges in their farm, they follow them. You know, there are some times that uh, farmers and the farm, they will be fighting. <laughs> you know what happened? <laughs> Guess what? When the, when, when the weed is taking over the farm, then the farmer will get to the farm. He's not really happy with the farm. Some, at that point, they are bad on him. But thank God, with the intervention and the help of our association, through the extension uh, agents, extension officers, they encourage them on the particular, you know, abyssize to use at that point in time. Then in their land preparation, we assist them a lot by getting tractors for them. Then stems, you know, at times there are challenges for them to get stems, not just stems, but the, 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 the you know, uh, developed one through the IITA, like um, TMS 419, like TME 0581 and so on. We ensure we get them the, 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 the develop the, the, the latest varieties so that they can, it can help their yields. Then another challenge they face is marketing. We have also come in to identify some processors factories. You know, though we do not have uh, many in those states, it's one of the things we are also looking up to the government to assist, you know, some individual cooperatives that are ready, you know, to partner with the government to have their own processing factories. Thank you so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. All right, that's how much you can take today on Talk Time. Till I come here again next week, I remain faith. Did you know that one of six children in Nigeria is malnourished? Did you know that Sub-Saharan Africa is the region with the highest prevalence of hunger? Did you know that over 20 million people in Nigeria do not have enough food to lead a healthy, active life? So, what exactly is the way out? Come, let's forge solutions at the Feed Nigeria Summit. To achieve the Feed Africa agenda, it is imperative that Nigeria is fed. A congregation that will address key national agricultural productivity issues like nutrition, post-harvest losses mitigation, improved food systems, market access, infrastructure, mechanization, ICT, youth as well as appropriate policies and legislations will all be present. Also, critical financial products to enhance investment in agricultural value chain shall be unveiled. The event will also feature the Nigeria Agriculture Awards, a platform for celebrating the men, women and institutions that have contributed to the re-emergence and development of Nigeria as a veritable force in agriculture. FNS 2017 Feed Nigeria to Feed Africa of illegal importation of frozen fish into the country is a battle the government is committed to fight to finish. On Agrostal, the director of Federal Department of Fisheries, Malam Muaz Mohammed, spells out the punishment awaiting culprits of this crime. The time that uh, it gave to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is that uh, Federal Minister of Agriculture, due to policy uh, uh, policy initiatives, um, directed that uh, all fish importers, you know, should also practice uh, domestic fish production because uh, we cannot just allow Nigeria to be a dumping ground for frozen fish, whereas we have enormous potentials to produce this fish locally. So as a result of that, any fish importer that is bringing in fish into this country was directed you know, to also practice backward integration, that is by producing fish in Nigeria. Mr. Minister's speech, the demand for fish in Nigeria is about uh, 3.2 million tons, of which only about 1.1 million tons was produced locally. That particular 1.1 million comprising both capture and culture. What I mean by capture is that uh, 
fish that is caught in the wild, in the rivers, in the dams, in the reservoirs, including the trawlers, all combined to make 1.1 million metric tons. So we still have a deficit of 2.1 million tons, which we augment you know, through import. Last year alone we imported about uh, 400,000 metric tons. In fact, we gave license to import about 800,000 metric tons, but what came in was just about 400,000 metric tons. The, the illegal importation, that is smuggling, well, that, actually that is the function of the customs. Uh, we are only in the policy arm, you know, we have uh, our laws and regulations. The Sea Fisheries Act provided for any person that is caught smuggling in frozen fish through the back door or through the land borders is liable to a fine of $250 million, I mean $250,000 or five years imprisonment, or both. Well, that is the, the law. Okay. Actually, the, we are collaborating with relevant agencies at the borders, the, um, the Agricultural Quarantine Service, the Department of Fisheries, the Nigeria Customs, the NAVDAC, they are all at border, you know, to check this illegal importation of frozen fish food because any fish that is farmed in Nigeria. In fact, any frozen fish is banned through the land borders. Importers are supposed to bring in their fish and discharge their fish at the ports. At the ports, we have inspectors who inspect the quality of the product before it gets into the market. But the fish that is smuggled through the land border you know, doesn't have that, so there is a lot of risk. But the, the health status of that particular fish is not you know, it's not good and uh, causing Nigerians. So that is a danger in it. And at the same time, government is losing a lot of revenue because fish that is landed through the, 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 the sea, you know, they pay through the ports, they pay custom duty. Whereas the one that is smuggled, government loses that. The government is providing a healthy environment for any investor to come into fish farming. The government has been calling on investors you know, to come into fish farming to augment that is the shortfall that we're having. And that I'm happy so many investors are coming in. There are a lot of... Uh, the, 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 most, uh, most, the major investment we're having right now are from the foreign companies. You see, the Nigerians investors, you know, they don't, I don't know the reason, they don't invest in agriculture. And even if they invest, it's at small scale. But I'm happy the foreigners, the foreign, yeah, the foreigners are coming in, you know, with huge investment up to $100 million, like the premier agriculture, like the Atlantic Rimpers, you know, the Triton Group, you know, they, are invest, they have invested heavily at this in agriculture. And that I assure you that uh, within the shortest possible time, we'll be able to meet the target and the demand. And if we produce surplus, we may export it. Nigerians are highly expectant of the much talked about Free Nigeria Summit, which is set to kick off on the 2nd of May 2017, with a huge attendance from major agri stakeholders in the country. Street Vibes brings you the expectations from the event. Take a look. The issue of land, if they can make land to be relatively available. If at all the government we have like 70 to 30 percent cut of the total revenue derived from the land to be okay. How to get to the grassroots farmers is very important. You know, and I think um, more of the budget that is, you know. Uh, the Nigerian budget should be pushed towards agriculture, which I think, you know, it's been said, but I don't think it's been done. I don't think we are really seeing it yet. Those farmers that are in the grassroots, that are really working, ought to 
get those, they find a way to get those funding to the people who are um, really doing the work. Action should be taken. And in this area, government should take the lead and grant loans. Because one of the handicaps of uh, those who are even interested, who want to go into the agriculture sector, is that of finance. And this is where government should establish, should give uh, what we call the, what, as what used to be the agricultural bank, which is meant to give loans to those who are interested in agriculture. And this will help them to increase their level of production, whereby agriculture will, not, will grow from the level of subsistence to that of what, as what we have in the, in the uh, organized societies. Basically, I think, uh, you know, for that kind of program, if it's coming up, uh, what uh, stakeholders need from government actually is providing an enabling environment, you know, for the industry to strive. You know, and uh, if you have an enabling environment, you know, where uh, every other thing that needs the farming industry to move forward can be done easily without bureaucracy. You know, maybe getting land, maybe getting loan, electricity, you know, uh, such things like that. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Indeed, agriculture is capable of eradicating poverty in the country. It's therefore high time we take it as a serious matter. This brings us to the end of today's episode. Many thanks for being a part of the program. In case you missed any part of the show, do log on to Agro Nigeria TV on YouTube as each episode of Agro on TV is available for your view. Send your contributions to our stream media platforms shown on your screen and we will broadcast it on the program. You can also advertise your products and services on this program as well as reach us out for your agricultural project and event. Till I come here again next week, I remain faith as I'm wearing. Think growth, think agriculture. Bye for now.